You ever go and shut the hood on your 1960s or even 70s GM car and you got a latch in the front and the back, the hood sticks up nearly a quarter of an inch and can't quite get that thing dialed in no matter what you've tried? Well, we're gonna try to conquer that this time around. How to get this to shut when you push the hood to the latch position and actually pull itself down when having to come around and cheat and push that thing into place. That's what we're gonna take care of today. All right, don't need a whole lot for tools this time go around. 916's ratchet, uh, with a 916 socket and a 3 8 ratchet. Some kind of a strategy I like to use this so we can kind of gauge the height of everything. Cause right now, as you can tell, the hood is higher than the fender cause I got a gap going on there. So I don't necessarily need that when I'm doing it, but it kind of helps visualize so we can see what we got going on. But I kind of cheated and pushed this corner down, but I'm still, it bounces back up. But when driving down the road, this thing actually works itself back up so we need to get the hinges properly adjusted and it can be done i'm going to show you how to do it because there's only two bolts for that hinge that adjust this position of the hood forward and back they go on the hood here so we'll have to make those loose too to kind of wiggle things around but let's get this hood height adjusted because it doesn't always work like we think that it should but underneath the hood, step number one, probably the most important thing to keep in mind when I'm doing this, we're even trying to attempt to mess with this. I've already done it. The hood hinges themselves either need restored, buy new ones, or lubricate them basically at the minimum to get it where it moves super free. If there's any binding in any of those joints, there's about six joints total, I think, on that thing. Any binding at all, it will totally mess up your adjustment. So the hood doesn't move like it should, the hinge will actually bind up and cause it to even stay kicked up some. So step one, like I said, I've already done it, lubricate all the points really good. The next thing we're gonna get down to, there's two bolts, one here and one back there. I put some white paint marker on, hope it looked good, but uh, it didn't work. That stuff just ran everywhere. And I wouldn't do that on your show car, but this car, the hinges still need to restore, but I wanna do some demonstration on how to tweak this hood and get it looking a whole lot more gooder. So now I said, these are the bolts. We're gonna take these loose wiggle the hood around but right now our hood sits up too high in the back now i can tell you that i've had every time i do this it never works exactly like i think it should but the best bet is work a little bit at a time and i'll show you how to get the hood all the way up then keep working it down or back up so you get what you need but you're basically going to keep fiddling with these two bolts until you get it dialed in okay now right now you see you see some paint mark around my bolts but unfortunately i didn't highlight it quite like i wanted it to but just take one bolt loose at a time. You'll see the front of this hood. That one's snug. We're not torqued, but snug. Now, if I push up now on the hood, you'll watch this hinge move quite a bit here. Now that hinge is in the all the way up position, so I'm gonna snug it up there. And I'm gonna do the same to the back, but the back's a little different. Take it loose, and let gravity take over. The hood's gonna be so heavy, it's gonna wanna kick that thing back up. Maybe. Let's see if I push on the hood here. Yeah, okay, see that's, I pushed up on the hood, the hinge dropped towards the floor, let gravity take over. That means now if I snug this up, both of my slots for the hinge, it makes this hinge all the way up on both adjustments. So I'm gonna shut the hood here. I might be pleasantly surprised, but let's check this out. I bring the hood down here. We're the same height as the fender, but our gap isn't good. So we're gonna have to slide that forward. Now let's see what's going on back here. Wow, definitely looking a lot better. I'd have to come around and push this down, but I still have about, oh, by the time it gets to the back corner, this on here, mm, a little over an eighth inch of a gap. So now what we'll do, I'll probably just take the rear bolt loose and then bring it down a little bit. And we'll check it again. Well, you little. All right. Take that up. Let's take this back bolt here loose. But I'll have to push up on the hood a little bit. Do this. Pushing up on the hood, you'll watch that hinge 
go towards the floor a little bit. And I move that probably a little over an eighth of an inch. Let's see what results we have. That's looking a whole lot better. I'm actually touching the fender and on the hood. I said, I only moved that thing about an eighth of an inch. Now, problem I'm having is my hood is back too far on this side. So I'm gonna take the bolts loose and I go into the hood. I'll pull this hood forward a little bit and see if we can square that up some. Take those loose. And if I give his hood a little tug, went a little too far there. Don't know my own strength, but that's okay. Just bump that thing back into place. Uh, a little more. Um, that's that's pretty good. Now this is a repop hood, so now. The trick to that is you just pick the hood up just enough to sneak your hand and ratchet in there and snug those bolts up. If I were to open it all the way, it's going to slide and screw everything up. So now, so just, just enough to get sneak my hand in here. That back one's a little trick here. Let's check our gap. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the latch mechanism, so I'm gonna simulate the height because that's the same thing the latch is gonna do when properly done up. Okay, now I push this down. My hood lines up here. Let's see. Now, my height is good here in the front. We're the same height on the corner. And then our back corner, Hmm, the hood's a little bit lower now. That's interesting. My when I tightened up the bolts here. But we're gonna take that back loose, bring it up a tiny bit. Here's another problem we're having. We'll call this point A, same height, and point B is slightly lower. But we have another problem, which there is no take bolt loose for adjustments, but right here in the middle of the hood. That'll be another video for another day, but there's ways to fix that too. But right now we're gonna to try to just get that corner dialed in, and this corner dialed in, and then we'll go from there. But I think I'm gonna take that loose and bring that rear bolt back up again just a little bit. And of course that'll throw off the other adjustment just a hair too. Just took it loose, <laughs> the weight of the hood kicked it up. Now, let's see. Now, of course, you wouldn't do this with a freshly painted, beautiful ride because I'd probably chip the paint, but we're not quite there yet with this one. All right, now we're here. Uh, height is good there. Uh, there we go. Now, some of that might just be some more hammer and dolly work because you can see by the time we get right here we're the same height so i need to probably work the corner of the hood but again nothing you can do for a hood hinge adjustment or latch adjustment will do any good here because we could bring the latch down further and get it to reach shut here that's not so bad I push down but then look at the front edge here we're down by like a almost a almost a half inch I said, now that's a, that's a trick for another day, but what you need to do first off though, just get the corner here dialed in, the back corner dialed in, and then we're gonna do the same there to the driver side, because it may move things around a little bit. Because right now, they're a little tight, but it needs to come forward a hair. And this corner here, I'll tell you, that's actually pretty close. Not too bad at all, but same problem. Center of the hood's just a little bit high. 
because here's the secret to these hinges there is no perfect pattern i i can't put it in writing that hey if you take the back bolt loose let it come with an eighth of an inch moves this a quarter inch the only thing i've learned in all my years of playing with these cars like i even showed you take the bolts loose work them a little bit at a time up or down and just check your results there is no perfect pattern that i have found now maybe you have or someone else has congratulations good for you I'm just showing you the technique that I have used and I get fantastic results and it works great. Again, this will be a separate video for maybe another day if you guys want to see that, but my front corner and back corner are the same height as the fender now. This is a little different kind of a uh, repair or get to work more gooder because check this thing out. You remember before when I opened the hood and I shut the hood because I'm all done with the car show? That thing was hanging out here in outer space by a quarter inch now same height so that problem has been solved and all we did was took them loose move a little bit at a time and we got the results that we needed both sides dialed in gaps up here are great and lined up so the next thing if you guys want to see a video on uh, how to bend a hood well it's actually a pretty simple situation the worst part about it is you need to take the hood back off the car but not the end of the world but there you have it. There a quick little recap how to set the hinges on pretty much any General Motors car. I wish there was an exact science, but like I just showed you, this is just how I've done it. It seems to work fantastically. I don't have any issues and I get the results that I want. I wish I had a, an equation to tell you exactly which bolt did which and how it worked. I still haven't figured it out. I just keep messing a little bit of time and I finally get the results that I'm looking for. So now this thing opens and shuts fantastically. My four corners are lined up. So I gotta tweak the middle a little bit, but that's a different video for a different day. And again, like I said, cutting a hole in the hood for doing a hood tack, well, that's a perfectly wonderful, great idea. Take a brand new shiny hood and put a hole in it. You know, for a hood tack, 100% worth it. And one other thing I want before we get out of here and go back inside, Firebird Fest. Just got home from that soggy situation. Um, and what's that mean, John? Well, what happened there was a rain or shine event. It rained just about the entire time we were there, but I will still tell you what, even though the rain put a damper on the mood a little bit, one of the greatest experiences that I ever had. I, I had so many people that act like we were friends for life. I mean, just ran into someone, didn't know I was necessarily talk about cars either. It was just some really awesome, like-minded people, which just happened to be there because of their Firebird. Any year from 1967 to 2002, all birds are welcome. Any condition, it doesn't have to be shiny, minty, new. It could be even this car, as long as it had a windshield, seat belt, and taillights, because I learned that you're not supposed to drive those on the road without them, besides all that. But it reminds me, that was a gal from 1976, Firebird. Drove all the way in many, many, many miles. Now keep in mind, this car looks like it may have just yeah, maybe kind of primered like this, but it had the glass, but it didn't have door panels, weather stripping. I'm not even sure if it had heat. Um, drove all the way in from Texas to St. Louis just to hang out with us and talk about our car, or just whatever. And I thought that was 100% fantastic. Just jumping in a car, doing a cross country trip just because you can. I support that. I think that's a fantastic, wonderful, great idea. But what I'm trying to share with you is the experience. I don't know how to explain it any better than you just need to go and experience it for yourself. You will have probably one of the best times ever. So many great opportunities. It's not just your normal car show. You show up in a parking lot and sit in a chair and you know, talk, which eh, I'm okay with that. But this show, you get to drive around a racetrack. You take a ferry across the river if you want. Um, they got a drive-in movie one, one evening and we watched uh, Smokey and the Bandit, which is pretty cool on the big screen. I mean, the list goes on. There's so many activities that it just doesn't end. And I'd just like to say, you don't want to miss out on this. I'll post some links when the time comes along closer to signing up again. I would suspect it won't be until next May. We've got a year. But get your car where it can drive and meet us there. It's going to be a great time again. I hope to see everybody there. But until then, we'll go back to playing with the Great Pumpkin and Back in Black High School car. And of course, if there's any videos and you want to see, let me know. I'll get them out there, especially if I can help get your bird to Firebird Fest. That's the goal for all of us at this point. So nonetheless, I'm going to shut this thing down. When I do come back out here, I'll grab the camera. And in the meantime, you guys have a good one, and we'll catch you then.